Starting to the bottom right, we have now our Terran player in red. He was called Baby, and now he's known as... Ace Team TY. Taking his initials. I think his name is Taeyang in English, if you want to romanize it that way. His opponent to the top left, star tail player, it is... Tati Obenji. Not sure who he's avenging, but he's a Protoss player and Startail just lost to Protoss, so I guess you could take that as you will. Is that another one of those, is that one of the pink mouse or the orange version? Like the party used to have? Looks like it. I, it wasn't actually on screen long enough, it was, I was, his, his face is very, uh, I need to see it again. It lack of a different word I'm going for interesting. <laughs> okay. So I it's just like it. how the glasses work, how he, how his eyes work with the glasses because he has like these massive glasses with really really small eyes and I don't know <laughs> it was very interesting I want to see again now I guess I'll have to wait I'll be patient on this one um, I was a little bit reluctant to use the word because you know when you're like like 16 and uh, one of your friends has a new girlfriend you haven't seen her yet and you ask one of the, looks the other guys and like so how does she look like she thought oh, well she's really nice she's really interesting and they're like ah okay okay I got it <laughs> So I didn't want to say that, and uh, but in lack of a different word. By the way, we have uh, the same build that we saw from Bjorn coming out from Ty. Yep. Uh, and we'll see how he decides to use that. Going back to the mouse just very briefly, Parting's mouse. Uh, I know that you got that from Mac Oh yeah. Too. But uh, I haven't seen that mouse. Every time I go to PC Bomb, there's always somebody, at least one person that mouse. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's some party fans out there, man. It's not the party mouse. That is tucked away safely it's in my It's the apartment. color mouse now. But the yeah. mouse probably developed a life on its own, and this is why I couldn't leave the apartment. The mouse locked me in. Maybe the uh, PC Bomb people who use that mouse are actually Calder fans. <laughs> Secretly. <laughs> I think they're more party fans than Calder fans, but it would, of course, be... Uh, well, the difference here with this build from versus when Pyong did it is that he's facing now a double gas pros in the main rather yes. than a, a greedy pros Nexus first. Exactly, not a Nexus first. This can still work against so many plays like this, depending on how well he scouts and if the bunker is smaller than the camera, but it's much harder to pull off. In fact, TY will probably just make a command center from here. Uh, by the way, touching back on the story that we talked about earlier, me being locked into my apartment now yeah. turned into me being locked out of my apartment because I forced the second bolt back with scissors that I had because I was like, I have to go to the GSL, I have to cast now. Yeah. And then I was hoping there was just a malfunctioning uh, keypad or whatever, try to pinch the code in again. Nope, it still doesn't work. So later on between the casts, I have to rush home with the cap and they have to try to repair that in the 30 minutes that I have before I have to head back again. This is so interesting. This looks like a void rail win. But it's been the pylon has been scouted, and now he's got enough marines to actually kill the pylon because of uh, how how this works out. Because he has the Ford barracks, so he can't actually make the Stargate now. He has to make a Nexus. And just hearing my voice right now makes me feel pitiful. <laughs> my, my nose is a bit congested. No, no, no. That that horse voice thingy uh, that makes you sound manly. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> As long as I don't sound like a horse. Not <laughs> quite. Um, well, you probably shouldn't start laughing. That would probably come out a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen. I just thank you very much. I just. <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> All right, well, this is actually serious. We're gonna get yeah. serious for a second because Ty is gonna knock down this pylon potentially. Yeah, that pylon is gone. And event, he's, he's already, already supply blocked. blocked. Yeah, he already is. And look at that micro by two. I pulled back one of the marines there. And he is heavily supply blocked. It didn't even start another pylon. Yes, the Nexus will help, help out a little bit, but there they are, double pylon. But this is already... This is throwing it back so much. At this point, TY is in a really, really great spot. He's already messed up his build by finding that pylon. There was no way he was just going to make a Nexus like that with a pylon forward like this. And so he, he had some plan. Maybe it was even a Ford Robo plan, but it was definitely going to be something. Watchtower's going to die here. Who's going to die first? Looks like the Marine the Gold map dies. And the Watchtower... It's gone. Bye-bye. Takes a second to fade away there, but now it's gone. Yeah. One of the characteristics of this map, of course. Yeah. I think it makes it a little bit better than the uh, Heart of the Swarm version. Yeah, I certainly agree. 
The thing is, on a lot of maps, people have been arguing that watchtowers are way too strong, and uh, this is one of the adjustments that you can make. I would still love to see a couple of maps without any watchtowers at all, though. Yeah, same here. Not all of them, but just like one or two, and then see how players accept it. And uh, because, for example, the watchtowers that are on the edge of the map still exist uh, after that period yeah. of time in the middle. They're not as useful, but they still exist. And in fact, Avenge is trying to take them now. Yeah. The thing is, in the middle of the map, watchtowers just give you so much control. You think about your Kuras plateau. If you control the two watchtowers, you control the map. Yeah. Think about uh, the map in Tomb Valley. And even if you look at a map like Zonaga Fortress, you just have one in the middle. That's yeah. why they had that timer on it, because it was it was too strong otherwise, especially in Terran versus Terran. We have now Robotics War Big coming out for TY. He's transitioning into a normal build here. His opponent, of course, is going to be going for probably some multi prong drop for Ass now that the Medivac stream is also being out here as well. Well, a lot of Marines here. Not a lot of uh, units here for Avenge. He went really straight into the pro production. And with a heavy supply block, he should have been a lot farther uh, behind now than he actually is. And he gambled a little bit here. He actually built so many... He completely focused on his pro production, didn't get any units out there. And, uh, well, if TY would have started to attack, could have done a little bit more damage. But still, it was yeah. a nice gamble. It paid off for Avenge, and now he's suddenly uh, in a 7 yeah. supply harvester lead, which is kind of where you want to be. Exactly. He's got three probes, or three observers on the map. One to the very far north uh, to not only look for white walkers, but also to be able to find any drops that might occur. He's also checking the third base down to the south, uh, to the left of TY's base, and he's going to be able to get into the main if he wants there. Then, of course, having an observer in the middle of the map is really useful for spotting any pushes that come across. So he's got a ton of vision on the map right now, and like you said, he took a lot of risks by not building attacking units, but it may pay off. It all comes down to this pressure by TY. Yeah. This is Marines with no combat shields against Colossi. Yeah, and he just used the stim as well. Used the stim with a few of his units and without a combat shield, this is of course always risky. And here with the Colossus, he has to move back. He cannot possibly attack this, but the drop might do damage. Yeah, the drop is the most important part. He's going to try to draw the force in the main that may be running with his Marines. But again, without combat shields, I just don't see this working. He hasn't started them. He has enough resources. I think he's just forgotten. This is a crucial mistake by TY here, not getting drop or uh, combat shields. Drops are important, yes, but they're not enough. One Marine actually just running in for the scout here. That was like for his gum, but he just went for it, took the stim, bam. But yeah, he still doesn't research it, and you're completely right. At this point, I f he, uh, he, yeah, he forgot it. We've seen Terran player take it very late, but this is way too late. And here, another attack in the main base with that medivac. Takes down one of the stalkers, and as soon as he spots the second Colossus, he moves back. He's making that drop actually to a lot without losing much. He starts the plus one armor upgrade. He has no idea about combat shield missing. Yeah, this is so... I mean, he's pulling a Marine King here. He's pulling an Aphrodite here. Those are like the two most notable examples I can think of for getting combat shields. Um, Marine King versus Kyrix is Marine split game. Not a lot of anti-air here. TY a little bit bold. It picks off an Observer though. And I like this because he knows the Stalkers are in the main. He's like, ah, maybe I pick off some hit points of the Colossus with my Vikings. Doesn't lose too many of his own. But the upgrades are becoming a big problem. Not yeah. only the combat shield, but the 2-2 two -two is now on the way for Avenge. Those 2-2 two -two upgrades that you just talked about, they are really going to be important because he's focusing on his upgrades a lot. He's going, to for, uh, he's going for the Chrono Boost here. He has the double upgrades. He will get even farther ahead. And TY, especially now with the combat shield missing, it's not like he can put a lot of pressure on his opponent. He's trying in the main base with another Medivac, but there are also a few units for Avenge just waiting for that to happen. And the Terran player has that supply advantage, but given time, Avenge will just have, have such a strong army, especially with the upgrades, that it's not going to matter anymore, especially without the combat shield. Yeah. And TY, he has to realize this. Yeah, I mean, with no combat shields against these units that have plus one <laughs> upgrades, and he doesn't even have armor, no armor and no 10 extra points, those are yeah. not doing much. He must be wondering at some point, why are my Marines always dead so fast? Why, exactly. why do I skip once and suddenly they're, uh, like, nearly gone? He cannot fight. In fact, I feel TY could actually go in and take an, an engagement. TY may not even realize himself that there's no combat shields. Because you have to look pretty close. There it is. Finally, he knows. He's yeah. like, wait a minute. And then he, he could take this fight, though, while there's no combat shields. I really think he can. He wants to be cautious here. He wants to make sure he can hold his third. But his third is late compared to TY's. His third is late, but now plus two plus two is completed. And 
He doesn't really have the bank yet to start plus 3 plus 3. But he has the army to move into the middle of the map and trying to force a fight. And that's exactly what he does. Nice micro with the Vikings so far. But really nice. The, yeah, but one of them down, but the Colossus is gone. He's trying to chase this army away. Nice position here for TY. A great split on the high ground. Yeah. But most of the Vikings are suddenly gone. And those Colossi were might go very well by the start there, Brodos. Exactly. But the, even without the combat shields, man, Green's damage output does not change. And with that concave, with that position, if TY was able to take the fight, he's had that third base up for so much longer, he can actually continue to build up an army. Look at the production tab, it really tells the tale. You can see how spread out it is for Avenge, how much he's getting. Obviously, part of that is the combat shields, but he's getting additional starport for more Vikings. He's getting additional Marauders now. His army count is just getting consistently better. As long as he can keep up in the upgrades, he'll be able to pull ahead in this game. One of the things that is really surprising is how far ahead TY is when it comes down to economy. He has a much, much bigger harvest account than uh, Avenge. And Avenge is going for three bases. On a two base economy, that would have made a lot of sense. But now he's on three bases, and with the saturation, he could really need a lot more probes. Yeah, he's just here. not making them. He's at 58. 58 against 68, and the additional mules. He's hitting a timing now, or at least he's going to attempt to. He's he has got to. Five additional gates on the way. He knows he has the better upgrades. Not forever, but. You know, an army supply, TY is still ahead. Now he has combat shields, now he's gonna have plus one for his bike as well. This is something he definitely can hold. It's all gonna come you know, down to control. If you wanna sell the idea of getting a third base and you never really saturate it, I feel that it was just a little bit too late for him to actually use it. Because as you said, TY is already ahead in army supply. It's not like he's in a position where he's he is ahead in so economy, long. but he doesn't have the yeah. army. Exactly, he has both. He's already had the economy of that base pay off. He can't throw away units like this though at the front if he wants to hold. He stems. The angle here is really good. He has as a flank, is the DPS enough though? This is actually so close to the Avengers upgrades. Avengers upgrades are awesome. This is exactly what he was trying to focus on. The plus two, plus two, and he's going in. TY has a lot of army, but does he have the right composition? It doesn't look like he doesn't have num Viking number. And he has to type GG, GG as he can't kill the Colossus anymore. Uh, yeah, not enough Vikings. The upgrades better there for Avenge, and he hit that timing really well. It was, it was definitely shaky. He could have done it. He was a little bit faster, but he was trying to run with a plus two, plus two, and getting the third base. He didn't saturate it, but I'm definitely going to rewatch that game because I feel that. I mean, a big issue was, of course, combat shield not being there. A lot of things that TY did could have been a little bit more effective with the combat shield and Avenge. I don't know, I, I really want to rewatch that game and have a, go, a little bit of a closer look at exactly the timings of Avenge here. The third base, not saturating it, and usually you end up being in a, a, a massive lead with the army, but then you don't really have the harvester, so this is the trade-off that you go for. Yeah. And he was really trying to get those upgrades out as fast as possible, chrono boosting them the entire time, not even starting plus three plus three because he wanted to hit with the upgrades. But with a few more Vikings, this could have ended differently. This yeah, was the one I thing that TY agree. didn't have. He had a very Marine-heavy composition from the beginning as well, rather than going for those Marauders. And he could have done more damage with his Marines if he had that combat shield earlier. Let's jump into game number two on Belshir Vestige to find out if Avenge can, you know, 